Hi everyone, and welcome to the channel! My name is Infantry Pulse, and today we're going to be looking at the top 5 infantry lances. Now this is generally a smaller group, there are not a lot of infantry lances, and there are not a lot of super viable infantry lances, truthfully, but among the top 5 there are actually some quite good ones, and actually some ones that I'm excited to discuss today. Uh, we've done swords yesterday, and we've actually gone through all of the mages last week. So we'll be tackling our lances today and then axes tomorrow. So make sure to subscribe to the channel to come back for the axe video tomorrow. And give the video a like if you enjoy it. And without further ado, let's get into our pick for number five. If only the two of us could rule together, I would defeat our foes while you hand on wise proclamations. So here we have Duo Ephraim, and Duo Ephraim is kind of a weird unit because he only comes back on certain banners. So he can randomly appear on like legendary mythic banners, or he can appear on Hero Fest. Those are basically his homes, but he's not part of the normal summoning pool, and he's not part of the normal legendary mythic rotation either. So he exists in a very strange place, truthfully. But when he does appear, he usually has a decent raid or shows with decent colors or all these kind of things. So it is very possible to plus 10 him. Um, so here I've actually Actually shown in arena builds. So duo units come with a dual skill, which means they score much, much better in arena. They have a higher score than their uh, stat total might otherwise belie. So here you have a Gale Force duo Ephraim. So the idea here is that his weapon gives him an auto follow-up as long as attack, his attack is greater than his opponent's, which it almost always will be with a build like this. Um, and then Heavy Blade will enable him to charge up Gale Force, barring the opponent having some kind of, uh, you know, um, guard type effect. So he'll be able to get into the back line pretty easily here and take out two units. He is actually a quite good unit. He does exist in kind of a weird space where he probably wants both Heavy Blade and Distant Counter. He, he kind of goes between those two builds and does both of them pretty decently well, truthfully. Um, but I've just chosen to highlight the Heavy Blade set here because I think the Heavy Blade Odd Tempest combo is quite a good one. But also you could go with something like uh, Joint Drive Speed or Joint Drive Res um, and run Distant Counter in his A slot as well and use him to quite good effect. Whatever harm might befall me, I will safeguard Prince Marth. Next on the list is going to be Female Chris. Now, Female Chris is a carbon copy of Male Chris, except being a Lance unit that gives her a much more unique role. So I've shown her here as a null follow-up tank that wants Brave Lucina support. And if you don't have Brave Lucina support, then you can just run Noontime instead of Soul, and she'll still fire it off every single time because she has the slaying effect on her Spear of Shadow. So what happens is she gets extra stats from her Spear and also gets debuff negation, which is a really good thing to have on an Aether Raids tank because it means you don't have to soak for her in terms of Bright Shrine, Dark Shrine, Chill skills, all those kinds of things. So she ignores all those debuffs, and that makes her a really good unit overall. Her high speed makes her a good user of Null Follow, up, but you can also run her as a Spurn tank. She's also she's one of the units that comes with Spurn, obviously, so running her as a Spurn tank is not a bad idea at all, truthfully. I prefer Null follow-up at the end of the day because I think it has more utility, especially in light season when you're going to be going up against a lot of Bramimons. So obviously, you know, Spurn will reduce Bramimons damage by quite a bit, but Null follow-up will reduce it by even more. So that's, that's my opinion on the Null follow-up versus Spurn kind of thing. Um, you'll see here that she has balanced defenses and quite high speed and attack. That makes her just a very, very strong unit um, overall in terms of tanking in Aether Raids in either season, truthfully. However ambitious the goal may be, a world free from oppression is worth fighting for. Coming in at number three, we have Brave Dimitri. And Brave Dimitri, people like bet on him kind of a lot. Um, Am I allowed to say that? Well, I did it anyway, so hopefully it doesn't demonetize me. Um, but uh, people like to like to talk down about Dimitri quite a bit, but really I think he's actually quite a good unit with a build like this. So Dimitri gets damage reduction based on comparative defense, and he has 52 defense to start out with um, here on this build, so he doesn't really need to stack his defense much more than that, right? So his defense will give him like 40% damage reduction, 
um, as well as uh, Blue Lion Rule giving him a guaranteed follow-up as long as his defense is higher. So that kind of works kind of like a half null follow-up in a way, because he has decent speed to work with as well, so he's going to be cutting through a lot of those impact type skills here. So Moon Gravitus, Grat Gratifus, there we go, Moon Gratifus uh, gives him a special charge on hit, so he can actually fire back Noontime right away and heal Noontime every single, every single round. So it makes him a very independent tank, and it makes him just like, a, and because it has this encounter built into it, it makes him uh, just really great at, at general tanking, right? So. I know people, again, they, they like to like talk down about Dimitri or say he's not that good or whatever. I don't I don't subscribe to that theory. I think that Brave Dimitri is actually quite good. He is, I, I think you could go back and forth with him and uh, female Chris about which one is better in terms of being a Lance Infantry unit. I personally picked Dimitri because I am a fan of that defense-based damage reduction as well as having that open A slot and special acceleration on his weapon. So overall, a very, very strong tank for Aether Raid's offense. Our bloodlines and ideals may differ, but we can still help one another. Next up at number two is another Dimitri. I heard you like Dimitri, so I got you a Dimitri so you can Dimitri while you Dimitri. So this is Legendary Dimitri, and Legendary Dimitri is pretty meta-defining in the water season. He has a Pref B skill, which is great, that means he scores very, very well. Um, as well as having a very strong weapon and that B skill itself being very, very strong. Atrocity is basically Omni Smoke, so it has a full uh, smoke effect in terms of all stats, but also has Pulse Smoke built into it, which is really, really strong. Um, his weapon also has speed based damage reduction and special acceleration, so it's, it's a very strong weapon. He's a very stacked unit, truthfully. Um, he comes with. Uh, the um, odd Tempest, right? But he needs a higher scoring C skill in order to score optimally. So I've given him Joint Drive Speed. I think that's a really good option for him. So he can stack that speed as much as possible and always get that 40% damage reduction. Um, and you can run you can run Sturdy Impact that he comes with as his default, but I prefer Distant Counter personally. It gives him better matchups against some of the water legendaries like Legendary Leaf, for example. Um, the speed-based damage reduction is also really good against the other water legendaries because they're typically low speed. People do stack speed on things like uh, Legendary Krom, um, but they do not stack speed on Legendary Leaf or Azura, not that that super matters. But overall, I mean, he has the weakness of having not so great res, but Atrocity is just such a great skill and Arid Bar is such a great weapon that he just really shines in that arena setting, and if it's water season, you can also use him on Aether Raid's offense to extremely great effect. Next, we're going to go through some honorable mentions. So our first honorable mention is going to be OG Azura. Well, Resplendent Azura, really, right? So you can also run just OG Azura. This is a Gale Force set that's meant to be used with Air Force. So Air Force is a strategy that you use um, Air with Lithiaberg and Fury, and she can knock herself down into Wings of Mercy range fairly easily, and then be a beacon for other Wings of Mercy units to then hop onto, right? So being a dancer that is able to have high HP and infantry pulse lower HP uh, Gale Force users, and also having really high speed to use Flashing Blade with, means that she can just one hit an enemy, um, and get that Gale Force off, right? So with its Curtains and Quicken Pulse, Gale Force is down to two charges, Flashing Blade charges it up twice, she's good to go, she can either attack again, or she can dance one of the units around her, which is very, very useful. This is also a role that's pretty exclusive to her. We only have a couple uh, Lance da Infantry Dancers, and Azura is definitely the one that runs this set to the greatest effect, and definitely worth something to consider if you're building a Gale Force offense team. Next, we have the other Lance Infantry Dancer, and that is Dancing Burkut. So Dancing Burkut is one of the few, one of the three actually, high defense dancers we have. So because he has high defense, he can often avoid Mila isolation. So I've really stacked his defense here to an excessive amount, as you can see, uh, but you can run him with a lot lower 
uh, defense and still be really, really great. The interaction between Wagasa, which has a built-in shield defense, and Mila is actually favorable to Burkut. So what happens is, Wagasa on the enemy phase, uh, on turn one, Mila's gonna have the advantage, right? But on every turn after that, Wagasa is going to chill Mila's defense, and then Mila will start the turn with that lower defense. So, except for on turn one, this Burkut has a, an effective comparative versus Mila 74 defense. It's not something she can get over, which is really great. So that's the interaction that I think people don't think about often enough. If you're running these high defense dancers on Dark Season, you want you want to run a Wagasa or a chill defense on someone's seal or someone's beast line. And our final honorable mention is going to be Fjorm. So Fjorm recently got a uh, remix, right? So I love that. I love that term that they gave it. So uh, her remix gave her Ice Mirror 2, which reduces her damage and then fires off basically a mini iceberg at her opponent. Makes her a lot like a legendary female Corrin, except, well, considerably worse. Let's be clear, considerably worse. Having built in um, Disencounter on her weapon is also quite great. Um, when you look at things like, you know, Legendary Krom or things like that, uh, that are ranged units that you will see in Water Season quite a bit, Fjorm actually holds her own. With Blue Duel Infantry, she scores decently well, not, not perfectly, but decently well, well enough to use her and get her Legendary bonus off. Um, keeping Shield Pulse is definitely the ideal here. Uh, you can run a different C-slot, she doesn't need that C-slot for score, but I do think a joint drive is definitely what is best for her in that C-slot. My father taught me the sword. I hope he'll teach me all about the lance as well. And finally, the number one Lance Infantry unit. You've heard her name a million times in these other videos. That is Brave Lucina. So Brave Lucina is a brilliant support unit, probably the best support unit in the game, in my opinion. She has a lot of contest from things like uh, Flane and from Male Corrin, but in my opinion, she is the best support unit because she gives special acceleration to physical units, right? So, and reminder, that's, that's all physical units. That's not just swords, lances, axes. That's also bows and daggers. So that's really, really great for those ranged units that might otherwise have a problem getting that special acceleration off. She also gives extra stats to them, and she herself is not the most uncompetent unit. She is a dragon slayer, which is something people often forget about, and it makes her a really good arena unit, actually. So with blue dual infantry you see here, she can be a dragon slayer that also supports all your other units, right? Giving them that special acceleration, giving them a bunch of extra stats. Here you see her providing a ruse buff as well. She can be a really, really great unit for that. Obviously, she's also super, super good at Aether Raids, but Aether Raids is really where she just needs one or zero merges and just stands behind your unit and cheers them on, right? She's a great cheerleader in that aspect. Uh, but here you can actually see that she's more versatile than that. If you get a bunch of merges on your Brave Lucina, which is really possible with the number of banners she's been rerun on over the course of the game's history, then she can be a very, very strong arena core unit. I put her in Earth Season here, but you, really you could run her wherever you need that extra special charge on one of your units. And that's the video, guys. So I really hope you enjoyed it. I hope you guys uh, learned something from it. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. There's a link to the Discord in the description. So I have my own Discord. It's really great. Uh, the people there are super, super kind, and they're really willing to help people with Aether Raids, whether you're just starting off or whether you're a veteran of the game. It's a really great place to hang out and discuss uh, Fire Emblem Heroes. With all that said, I'll be back for the Axe Inventory video tomorrow. Until then, have a great day. Bye.